Right, okay guys, um, another teardown for you. Uh, today we're going to be taking apart one of these. Um, these were given to me by um, a friend. These are security devices for accessing a uh, very secure private bank account. So uh, what you would do is uh, this device displays a uh, number uh, and you type a PIN number in and it calculates a new code. So uh, what you do is you just go to the login page and you... Uh, log in using this device. So um, some banks have this device called a pin sentry where you put a chip and pin card into a little pocket calculator type device and you type in a pin and it computes a code using the pin and something on the card and you use that. This is just an alternative device. This type of device is called an RSA secure ID. It's, it predated the pin sentry by about phew, nearly seven or eight years I think. And it's widely used in sort of corporate networks um, and various other things such as that. So um, let's just show you how it works. So what you would do is you'd, you'd go to the bank's web page and you type in the, uh, uh, your login. So in this case, we're going to be using uh, my friend's login. Elizabeth R2. Okay. Okay, now having entered the username, we then go to the device and we enter the PIN code, in this case, okay, like that, and we press enter, and we've got our code that we now put into the website, and here we have a little bar graph showing you how long that code is valid for, and each code is valid for one minute, and when the bar graph runs out, that code will no longer be accepted. So uh, that's it, really. Um, I would show you the rest of the login process, but you know it's it's not my bank account, so you know for privacy reasons we we, we can't do that. Okay, so this is the back of the device. Um, it's a sealed metal can. If you look at the edge there, you can see that uh, it's just a sealed can, um, crimped edges, and there's a serial number and an expiry date on there, which I've just disguised. Uh, with a bit of tape for confidentiality reasons. Um, interestingly, um, the device was about five years old at the time I came by it, and uh, it still had a counter on it, but uh, literally at about two minutes past midnight on the expiry date, the device turned off. So uh, it obviously kept time pretty well for about uh, five years, and uh, for the last few days it had this little tiny... <clears throat> number three in the display telling you that uh, it was about to expire and now it's expired completely. <clears throat> so, uh, well, it's useless now. We may as well take it apart. Okay, right. So I've <clears throat> prized the back of the can off. It was quite painful, very tightly crimped on. And uh, this is the actual device and it's sort of embedded in plastic. And you can see there's a fairly standard PCB in there. It's a battery, 3-volt lithium battery, which is soldered into the board and there's a little timing crystal unsurprisingly uh, given that uh, it needs to keep time as part of security interestingly it's in some sort of little can metal can there which uh, i'm not quite sure why that's done maybe for <coughs> better mechanical stabilization or something okay well let's see what's behind this plastic then Okay, well, we've managed to get it out. Um, it's incredibly tightly glued down. So something's obviously happened. It's really unhappy now because it's flashing 88888. So it's obviously raised some sort of error condition um, as I was trying to force it out. Um, but on the back, there's not really much to see. Uh, battery, um, presumably some sort of um, application-specific IC, and a timing crystal and just a couple of little decoupling capacitors, and that is it. Literally, that is it. There are one, two, three, four, five, uh, six decoupling capacitors. Uh, one of them I snapped off somewhere and has flown off um, during the removal process. Um, and two uh, 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 crystal stabilizing capacitors. And the battery. And literally, that's it. And the LCD. Um, now, often in the case of these um, security devices, there's, there's going to be some sort of uh, anti-tamper device. 
um, and it wouldn't surprise me to see what's on earth is all this sort of stuff. You know, you do wonder whether there's some sort of uh, capacitance sensing or something in there, um, or whether it's just ground plane, I, I don't know really. Um, I can't see any obvious tripwire circuits in here, but again, you know, if these things are designed properly, um, you won't find them until it's too late. Um, looks like it's just a two-layer board, I think. Yeah, I think it's just two layers, but it's extremely thin. It's sort of a fraction of a millimetre thick, so, I mean, it, and it's almost, it is almost flexible, um, given that it's uh, so thin. But it does appear to be just standard FR4 rather than anything clever. Um, and it's incredibly sticky. Um, we might just try scraping some of this epoxy off and see what we get. Okay, well, what did I learn? Well, that epoxy is unbelievably tough. Uh, and the second thing that I realised I've now screwed up was I was assuming that this would be some sort of BGA mount. Uh, I don't think it is. I think it's probably a wire bond mount. And I've just gone and scraped, <coughs> scraped half the die circuits off because it's now dead. Because as soon as I saw the shininess, it's dead. Uh, so I've obviously scraped off half the circuits. So that's the end of that. Oh, well, I hope you found that uh, interesting. It was certainly quite uh, interesting trying to get into the thing because it was really, really tough.